Hi everyone, can you hear me? Wow, there's 14 of you here already. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late. Um, I can see Lisa, Marcia, Ellen, Rachel, Charlotte, Barbara, Thea. Um, I can see Charlotte saying I love how we're up from all over the world. So do I. And you've obviously been talking to each other because I can see somebody saying something about so worth it. So I'll have to go back and have a look there. But if you can just let me know that you can hear me, that would be good. Jason's saying yes. So I'm assuming that means you can hear me. So... Is Rachel having problems? Going to come back in, screen's going mad apparently. Terry's saying hi everyone. Hi Ashley, you sound loud and clear. Brilliant, thanks for that Charlotte. Yes, can you hear me? Hi Donna. Good morning to G. Lavenant, is it? Sorry I'm rubbish with names and stuff can hear me great. Hi everyone from a lovely sunny South Derbyshire. Yeah, it's been sunny all day here in North Derbyshire too. So, um, right, yeah, sorry, like I say, I was, I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. Um, I was, I, I'll confess I was playing with an embroidery design. Um, Terry saying can hear loud and clear. Right, I've not got anything specifically to talk about or show you tonight other than somebody asked me how you get a design from canvas to the machine so what I'm going to do I had a very quick look in canvas earlier on and there's this cute little easter egg gift box which you know I'm not so sure if you did it in other papers could be used for any kind of little gift box really um I suppose this shape is a bit egged shaped, but by the time you've tied it up with your ribbon, I'm not so sure if it specifically is or not. So what I thought I'd do, I'm going to open this design, I'm going to download it via Wi-Fi to the Scan and Cut, and then I'm going to flip over there and I'm going to cut it and assemble it. Like I say, I've not looked at it other than to look at it earlier. So I don't know how it goes together, but it, it looked, it's only in two parts. It can't be that difficult, she says. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm gonna do tonight. And then obviously if we've got any questions along the way, we can address those. But this is basically, I can't remember who asked me the question. I'm sorry, I am rubbish with names. Hi, Karen. Um, but this is how to get your design from Canvas via Wi-Fi onto your Scan and Cut machine. Hi Alison, hope you're okay. So let's go into it. So you should all be able to see my Canvas screen and I'm in Canvas online. So I'm just gonna select this project. I'm not even going to bother opening it in Canvas. I'm just going to, um, in fact, no I am. So I'm going to open, it's, it looks as though it's in two mats, A and B. So I'm just going to select the first box here that says import parts. Alison's saying you can hear me and I'm going to say, OK. What weight paper are you using? Um, I honestly don't, I'll be using stamping up paper and I'll be using st stamping up card. But other than that, I've not even cho I've not even got the card or the paper out. So when I get this over to the scan and cut machine, I'll just drag some card and some paper over and I'll let you know what I'm using. On my website, applelover53.co.uk, under the Stamping Up tab, I think it says free resources. If you go on there, it tells you the weight of our cardstock and our paper because I just can't remember off the top of my head, but it will be stamping up card and paper. So that should hopefully narrow down the weight of it for you, Marcia. Right, so 
I've got the design on the mat. I'm going to say download. So the big purple button over on the left hand side, I'm going to say download and I'm going to say scan and cut transfer. In fact, um, let me think about it. No, I'm not. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put both pieces onto one mat and send it over in one go. Then I don't have to keep swapping from desk to desk. So let's just highlight the name up here and I'll call this um, Easter Box 1 and I'll save it into my project and say OK. Then I'll go back to Canvas Workspace, I'll go back to the project and I'll open up Mat B and say OK. So I've now got the second part of the design already on the mat. Um, I don't have to give it a name but I will. I'll call it Easter Box 2 and save it. Now because I'd saved the first part, if I go to my projects here, I'll catch up with your comments in a minute. The first part is already saved here. So if I select it, it will put that on my mat. So I've got the two bits for this design on the mat now. Now I can send them both over to the scan and cut machine and I can open up both parts on the machine. Otherwise, I would have had to have sent one over. I would have had to have just scooted a desk along brought that design up and then come back and sent the other. So let's go download, scan and cut transfer. If you want to download the design to your computer, you use this one here, download to PC. I'm just gonna send it straight over Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna say close and it should now have gone over to my scan and cut machine. So before I swap desks, I'm going to just come back and just check the comments. Um, Philip is saying hello. Denise is saying hello from Leicester. I've already got Karen. Alison's saying she can hear me. Charlotte's saying it's another crafting adventure. Patty H is saying hello. Hi Mandy, yes I'm fine, thank you. Thea's saying I have made the rabbit egg holder, they are really cute. Oh, great. So if I get stuck at putting it together, Thea, I'll be asking you for your suggestions. What's the best cardstock weight to use? Hi, Vicky. It's okay. I was a few minutes late myself, so don't worry. The, the shape is in Canvas Workspace, Vicky. It's called Easter Egg Gift Box. It comes up on, well, on my screen anyway, when I log into Canvas, it comes up on the first screen and I'm in Canvas for online. But it, it should be the same whether you're using computer or online. Hello from across the pond in Connecticut. Well, welcome, Darlene. Um, oh, Vicky's saying she's got it now. And Alison's saying it's from the projects. Right, so I'm going to swap desks. So just give me a minute. Bring all my bits and pieces over with me so I can still see what you're all saying. I'll grab a box of card and I'll grab some paper. It's not Easter paper, but right, so you should be able to see my desk. I'm just going to find my scan and cut mat. Oh, I've got all sorts of things on the desk because I've been doing embroidery, so I'm just moving a few bits out of the way. So, um, Barbara's saying you've made the rabbit egg holder as well. It's cute. Oh, that's good. So a couple of you've made it already. Fab. Right, so just excuse the noise while I tear the plastic off the mat. Well, that wasn't too bad. Actually. I think my mat might need re-sticking. <laughs> Usually it makes that horrible noise, doesn't it? Um, right, so let's see what we'll use. 
Let's see what colour card stock we've got. So I've got blue, pink. You can choose the colours. I'll tell you what I've got. Okay, we've got yellow, like a mint green, orange, dark green, pink and blue. So if somebody gives me a colour for the cardstock, and then we'll see what colour paper I've got to go with it. Barbara's saying, I like them so much, I made three. Oh, that's Thea, sorry. Thea saying to Barbara, brilliant. Alison saying, had a good newsletter yesterday. Oh, brilliant, Alison. Had a good newsletter yesterday after my breast scan. Oh, that's that's good then. Okay, I'm waiting for somebody to give me a colour and then I'm just going to look. Rachel saying, hope all is well, Alison. I fixed them to a plastic plant pot holder and made and made lovely presents with a plant. And, oh, that sounds good, Barbara. Someone said mint green. That was the first one that came up, right? And then the next person said blue. So let's see if any of this paper will go with mint green. <laughs> Do we think to mint green and grey? So we've got mint green, blue, blue, mint green. Well, mint green was the first one I saw. Thumbs up, Alison. Yeah, it is good news. That's great. Someone's saying pink, someone's saying yellow. Okay, well, mint green was the first one I saw. So if this mint green is a full sheet of 12 by 12, I'm going to go with mint green. And then what do we think for grey? It's not going to be very Easter-like, but I wanted to see, you know, really, if we could make it and it wouldn't necessarily be Easter. Grey is good. All right, well, we'll go with mint green and grey. So that's that decision. So let me just put everything back out of the way. So for anybody that was asking before, the card stock I'm using is Stampin' Up and it's from the Suttles colour palette and this is 12 by 12. I don't usually buy the 12 by 12, I just usually buy it in A4. But I do keep a small supply of 12 by 12 just in case I do need it for a bigger project. So I think this will work better. And again, I'm using, this is the Peony Garden Designer Series paper. This is all still current product for anybody in the UK that, um, you know, is interested. The Pink Roses paper. It's not pink, it's more of a peach. Let's stick with grey for now. Right, well, I'm going to move them off my desk. Just pop them on my chair. And I'll do the box first. So I'm just going to line up the piece of 12 by 12 on this mat. And I'm just going to burnish it down with the back of my spatula. As I say, from the, the feeble noise that the plastic made peeling off this mat, I'm not sure how sticky it is, but we'll go with it. Right, my scan cut's gone to sleep, so let me bring that back to life. And we'll flip over to the scan and cut. Um, Debbie McBride is saying hello from another neighbour across the pond, South Carolina. Well, welcome, Debbie. It's lovely to have you here. 
We can always substitute the egg shape for another holiday shape. I put pumpkins on the front of the bottle. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Like I say, I've not made this and I've only looked at it earlier today just to see what, because we've not done one of these projects from Canvas for, for a while. So I'm laughing that you put your paper away as you go, <laughs> Barbara. Um, and I bought that pattern paper. Great. OK, right. We should be on the scan and cut machine. So the question that's brought about this tutorial was, how do you get the design from canvas to the machine? Janice is asking me, do I mainly use the standard tack mat? Yes, Janice, I do. I, I mainly use the standard tack mat for everything. The low tack mat I would only normally use for like um, a thin paper. I'm going to use this Stampin' Up Designer Series paper on this mat as well because as I say I'm not sure how sticky the mat is but I'm going to just use the standard mat right let's let's go so this is how you do it so whoever it is that asked me if you're watching hi from Ohio can never say that oh Ohio um as I say I'm not sure whether you're here because I can't remember who it was but if you watch it on replay, this is it. So I, I, I got the design from Canvas. I used the transfer via the internet. I've got my scan and cut machine on, which you should all be able to see. And where it's, and I've got the Wi-Fi connection, which is in the top left-hand corner, and it's blue. Sometimes if you send a design over quickly and then come and switch your machine on and go to retrieve data, it'll tell you there's nothing to retrieve. And it could likely be that you've not waited for your Wi-Fi sign in the top left hand corner to light up blue. So I'm going to come here now to retrieve data. And because I sent it over from Canvas and it doesn't matter whether it's Canvas for computer or whether it's Canvas online, it's still this icon on the top right hand side. So I'm going to select that and it will always retrieve the last item you sent over. And that's why I put both the parts to this design on the mat, because otherwise I would have had to have come over to my machine, which is on the desk next to where I was originally, and I would have had to have saved it. Then I would have had to have gone back to my other desk and sent the second part over. So rather than keep you waiting while I'm swapping desks, it was easier to send both bits over. So I've got both bits on the mat. Now I can clearly see them here. Not sure how well you can though, so let me try and zoom in a little bit. Just wait for it to refocus. So I can see I've got the outer egg shape and I've got the box shape. So I've got the two elements on this map. So I'm going to save them. And I'm just going to save them into the memory of the machine for now, because obviously I can only cut one element at a time. So I'm going to save it into the machine. It will tell me in a minute that it's saved it and it will give it a number. But I don't necessarily need the number because I know it's going to be the last thing I saved. So I'm going to say OK. So now I'm going to select the egg part and I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to go to the trash and send it to the trash so that I'm just left with the base shape which is like the main box because that's obviously what I've loaded up on the mat in the mint green card. So now I'm just going to load this mat into the machine I'm going to say OK and I'm going to do a background scan. I know it should fit on the piece of 12 by 12 card, but just for anybody that's new that doesn't know, I'm just going to say start and scan the mat with the piece of mint card. You should be able to see it rolling through. And coming out. 
so I can see, let me just go into the settings and make sure I've got the dark background I have. So I can see that this, you know, clearly fits on this piece of 12 by 12 card. Hi Lynn, it's fine, I was late starting. <laughs> you're not in detention, you're fine. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, let me just move you back a little bit so you can actually physically see what I'm doing at each step. So I've scanned the mat, I can see the design, I've got the mint green card loaded, I'm just gonna say okay, select and cut and start. And then I'll just move you back a little bit. You're not gonna be able to see it all, I don't want to keep moving the camera too much um, because I know it, you know, the motion does make some people a bit dizzy. So hopefully this mat should be sticky enough to cut this design. And you should be able to see some of it working its way around. So while it's all cutting and it's doing its score lines what's what's everybody been up to this week i know we're all still in lockdown it's good news that we've got a road map out here in the uk so hopefully things will start to get back to normal from easter time i've been out for a couple of walks with hannah i've been working on some projects and doing some filming and some editing I'm going out with Hannah in a little while, about seven o'clock, because she's going to do some indoor practice at the golf swing room that she's allowed to use while we're in lockdown. So that's going to be my night after I've finished here. Barbara. Um, no, no more complaints, but somebody did make a comment about me having my drink. <laughs> you know, when, I, when I'm sat chatting to you all and I say, just give me a minute while I have a quick drink, drink of my juice. Somebody complained that I was too near the uh, microphone. <laughs> Do you know, you can't please everybody, can you? Hi, Carlotta. But no, and at the end of the day, you know, if that's all somebody's got to moan about, God bless them, you know, let them have the moan. But it's funny because I was watching YouTube in bed the other night, and I don't know if any of you have seen any of the ladies' videos, I think she's called the Posh, is it the Posh Paper, Posh Paper Lady Crafter or something like that, and um, I watched a video of hers um, because the title was something about I won't tolerate rudeness or something like that and apparently she's been getting comments as well bless her so seems to be something in the air at the moment so Barbara's saying been studying the back of my eyelids a bit today I've been working on a cutting file for a theatre card and reading your forum. Having trouble posting on it though, I think I'm too verbose. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> right, let me flip cameras. I'm going to unload the mat. And this is what we've got. Not sure how well you're going to see it. I've put... I've got all my main lights on in the room and I know it's still light, but the reason I've got them on is because I couldn't remember how quickly it gets dark these days and I didn't want to be getting up and running around and trying to turn lights on. So I know I can see I've got a little bit of a glare above me, but hopefully now the lighter nights are coming on these Sunday night lives. I won't need to have the, the main lights on. We should be able to 
make do with daylight, hopefully in a few more weeks, especially when the clocks go back at the end of March. Right, let me see what we're saying. So Jason's been making Roman blinds. Oh, for your orders, Jason. And you're going to be making birthday cards. Mags is saying, hi, Ashley, hope you are all OK and staying safe. Yes, I am. Thank you, Mags. Are you? Corinne, is it? Corinne is saying hello. Oh, my goodness, just to take a drink. I know you can't please everybody, can you? Um, Maria has been making a couple of birthday cards for March. Started spring cleaning. I think I need to do that, Alison. <laughs> oh, I keep, I look at it and I think, no, I've got better things to do with my time. <laughs> but I really do think I need to start. Maybe, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe next week. Vicky is asking Jason, where do you get the hardware for the Roman blinds? Jason's your man, Vicky, because he's a... He's good at sewing. Terry P is saying, I've been making cards to have on hand to send to family and friends. Loving the Stampin' Up snail bit. Yeah, isn't it funny? I hated it when I first saw it in the catalogue because as demos, we, we get access to the catalogue a month before, you know, customers see it. And I didn't get it. I actually posted a message to somebody saying, what are the snails about? I don't understand it. But the paper is super cute. I am going to be making some more cards with it soon. And the in bloom dies and stamps. Yeah, I've not got the in bloom. I got the pretty perennials, but I didn't get and I bought the bundle, the dies and the stamps, but I didn't get the in bloom yet. Thea is saying foiling the insert for a goth friend's wedding card. You can see it. Um, finish making a baby quilt, Lisa's saying. Hello from Sweden. I'm sorry, but I, I cannot attempt to say that name because I'll get it all wrong. Packing for a quilt retreat, Chris is saying. Yes, I watched the... Okay, so did you see it, Alison? It popped up in my... You know, like when YouTube recommend or suggests that it was it was um, the thumbnail that caught my eye and I went on and I watched it, bless her. She's been getting comments about her hands and her nails and all sorts of things. People can be so rude. Patty's saying, I have just been crafting, getting my second shot next week. OK, I've not even had my first yet. Um, I appreciate your way of teaching. You don't skip the cutting out part and you use a brother a lot. A lot of channels are geared to cricket, yeah. Um, Derek, uh, Derek is saying hi to everybody. JD Cougar, don't worry, I was a bit late starting myself. Ellen's been putting vinyl on baby grows. Right, I'm going to stop there and carry on. So, let's remove the waste. And this is the box. Okay, so I think what we'll do, I'll cut both parts. So I'll load the mat with the paper now. And this paper doesn't seem to have a direction, so that's good. But I'm not going to rub this down as hard with it being designer series paper. I mean, this is thicker than some scrapbook papers, but it's not as thick as the card. So let's flip back to the scan and cut. Move you back to the screen and then I'll come back to comments in a minute. So let's load the mat up. So we'll say OK for that one. We'll hit the home button and say yes, it's OK to delete all patterns. And I'll load the mat. I'm going to go to retrieve data. Now this time, because I saved the design into the machine, I'm going to go to the machine rather than canvas. Okay, so I'm going to hit machine 
I'm going to jump to the last page because it's the last thing I've saved and I'm going to select the design and say OK. Now I'm going to select on the box part because that's the bit I've just cut. I'm going to say edit and send that to the trash and say OK. And now I'm just going to cut this out of shape. Now, again, I can clearly see that that's going to fit on this piece of card. But just for anybody that's new, I'm going to say OK and do a background scan and start. And while that's scanning, I'll come back. So Jason's saying where he gets his hardware from. Karen's saying got a new stamp set bundle. Delicate petals is lovely. Lynn is saying I've just finished a three week project creating fitted cardboard boxes that I designed for my Ikea Calyx. Oh, that sounds interesting. Now all done and loads of spare storage ready to be refilled. JD Cougar saying I got my SDX 22 5F yesterday. Can't wait to try a plique with my faff icon sewing machine. Yes, I saw it disgusting, Alison's saying. Right, okay, so we're, okay, so let me see if I can make the background lighter. Okay, so I can see it's going to fit, but I am just gonna move it down ever so slightly. So I'm, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna use the icons just to scoot it down a little. And I'm gonna say, okay, okay, select, cut and start. So it looks like a really simple box this doesn't it it's basically just two parts it's the mint green bit is the holder where you would put your treats and this piece i'm doing in the gray is the outside that kind of holds it together and decorates it by the look of it and yet i'm guessing that if you did it in nice spring like colors it would be a cute little easter treat box you know to fill up with um little mini eggs something. I'm not particularly using Easter paper, but you know, it's good to see how things look in different card and paper. So that's finished. So let's undo it, unload it, I mean. Let's take this off. And you see, when you look at it, in canvas to me it looked tiny but this design is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be so that's what I mean I think sometimes you've just got to you know cut these things to see how they look and one thing I would say I've got a lot of old scrapbook paper that I've had for years like old K and company stuff and um is it we are memory keepers and I can't remember, all kinds of stuff. And I was going to get rid of it. I, I mean, I did give a lot of it away, but I was going to go and get, I was going to get rid of it. But I keep it now. And if I'm testing out designs and things, I tend to use all my old card or scrapbook paper. I'm just going to put all the tools away and move the machine so I can clear a bit of space for the mat. So I use all my old supplies for, for doing tests and things. Right, so this is what we've got. We've got, um, do you ever make anything in construction board? I've, I'm not sure what you mean by construction board. I have made things in the past, Jason, in like grey board. You know, that kind of board that you get on the back of notepads and things. I've made mini albums and things like that. There, there probably are a couple of videos on my channel. Um, I'm not if that's if that's classed as construction board, then yes, I have. I did make a little card holder to hold the little three by three cards and envelopes. That's definitely on my channel. 
don't know if that was last year or the year before. That'll probably be in the Stampin' Up playlist because I decorated it using some Stampin' Up paper. Vicky's saying, I can't find on Stampin' Up website where it gives you the weight of the cardstock. No, it's on my website, Vicky. If you go to applelover53.co.uk, click on the Stampin' Up tab and then scroll down. I think it's under free resources and there's a PDF document that I've put on my own website and it tells you what the weight of the designer series paper is and their cardstock. So hopefully you'll be able to find that. Anna is saying, hi, I made it. I've started to use old paper to test cut projects now instead of giving it away. Yeah, that's what I've, I've been doing as well, Jason. I'm in SC also, grey board from Create and Craft. Okay, I, I think the grey board might be similar to what I'm talking about. It's the kind of grey board that you get on the back of notepads and that kind of thing. I have made projects with that. I've even made projects with old cardboard packaging. I did, um, what did I do? I did something last year. That might be in the Stamping Up um, playlist as well, or I can't remember, but there are things on my channel where I've used board and created things. So Jeanette is saying to Vicky, I just googled what GSM is stamping up cardstock and I got all the answers, yeah. There's definitely a PDF on my website anyway. Right, let me find a bone folder and let's have a look at these score lines. And this is the bit where I struggle when I'm, when I'm on camera because I have to pick it up to see where the score lines are. And then that sometimes means that you can't all see it. So I'll try my best. Jason say my friend my friend saves all her breakfast boxes. Yeah, I used to use cereal boxes and all sorts years ago. So just literally folding on the score lines that the scan and cut has put in for me. So you've all been busy then this week, haven't you? If you've all been making cards and blinds and all sorts of things, so that's good. I've got them. I think I've got all the score lines. So it just looks as though they're all on these tabs. Doesn't appear to be anything on the sides, and I'm guessing that's probably because does that fold up? This is where I might need some help from um, was it Ellen and Patty that had Barbara that had made these. Let's see how these go together. Let's fold them two first. So Jeanette is saying thick cardstock available in Whisper White and Very Vanilla. Yeah, they're now called Basic White and Very Vanilla, 250 to 280. I'm just curious to compare when I see something tempting at Michael's. <laughs> Did um, you use the deep cut blade for the mount board. I used a regular blade when I cut mine, but I think I did it in a couple of cuts. Patty H is saying my parents save their cereal type boxes. I have loads. Jason saying had a dead arm for two days after the jab. Oh dear. Right, so I think this is how this goes. So basically, this is the side it's scored on and I've folded and I'm turning it over. And by the look of it, that 
goes on there, and then that goes on there. So that all looks fairly simple. So I'm going to use I'm going to use wet glue, and I'm going to hold it as I go. If I've got any wet glue left in my Tombow. So I'm going to start with this little tab nearest this angular side. And I think I'll work on one side at a time. And I'm not putting a lot of glue on because it does sometimes ooze out. So basically I'm lining this cut edge with this dash line here. And I'm going to just hold it until it grabs and then I can read your comments. So Anna is saying, sorry to be a pest, but I am having a difficult time he hearing you. Is anyone else having trouble? Okay. Well, everybody said they could hear me fine at the beginning. So if, if you can just let me and Anna know if the sound is still the same. So Jeanette is saying one thing to remember about stamping up cardstock, it is one colour throughout, does not have a white core yet, and that's true. Uh, Jason saying can still hear fine. Marcia is saying, Anna, would it help if you put closed captions on? And Maria is saying you can hear fine. So the sound seems to be okay for everybody, so that's good. Right, so that bit's grabbed now. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue on this one now. So JD Cougar saying, my volume is all the way up, but can hear you. Okay. Janice is saying, can hear. Not having any problems hearing, Ashley. Are you using a PC? Check your sound mixer for the internet browser that you're using. And Denise is saying, hearing fine. Okay. So everybody seems to be hearing me okay. Everyone's saying sound is good. Right, that's fine. So I'm going to do the same thing. So the cut edge here is going to the dash line here. I'm not going over the dash line. I'm just going up to it. And again, I'm just kind of holding it underneath with my fingers and then just applying a little bit of light pressure here where I'm tapping. Thank you, it may be my device, Anna's saying. That's good, okay. Karen's saying stamping up cardstock cuts lovely on the scan and cut. It definitely does, yeah. Vicky's saying try closing the video and reopening it, okay. Right, so that's those two elements done. So I think I'm going to do the its opposite next and then I'll turn it over and I'll do the other side. So I'll do the same thing. I'll apply a little bit of wet glue here. Loud and clear, Lynn's saying. Oh, and I'm on the big screen. Oh, dearie me. And then I'm going to do the same. So the cut edge to the fold. And this is where you need like about three hands. Marcia is asking me what kind of glue. Okay, Marcia, it's called Tombow. It's a wet adhesive that dries clear and it's got like a pretty quick grab on it, which basically means you don't have to hold it for very long before it, you know, it grabs and then it will dry pretty quickly. I sell this um, in my Stamping Up shop, but if you're not in the UK or you want to look for it somewhere else, it's made by, who's it made by? Um, made in Germany. Oh no, made in Vietnam, it actually says. But then there's something about Germany on it as well, but it does say made in Vietnam. And I can't see who makes it. Okay, so we'll go to the next bit anyway. And 
I'll do the same and then we'll swap over sides. So cut edge to folded edge, hold it in place, just give it a couple of seconds to grab. Patty H is saying, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Patty. Yeah, there's 65 people on here. So how many thumbs up have I got? Sue is saying, I use an external speaker or earphones, but only for these lives. For some reason, that may help you. Alison is saying, still hearing great. Jeanette is saying, best glue there is out there. What, the Tombow, Jeanette? Do you, do you use that as well? Tombow is available at Michael's in Canada. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not, um, you know, it's not a stamping up. They don't make it, but we stock it. But I do know you can buy it, you know, on the internet. Just, it, if I'll bring it up nearer to the camera in the hope that you might, is it going to focus? So you can see it's called Tombow Mono Liquid Multipurpose Glue. And it's got this fine end. And if you undo the other end, it's got a bigger spreading end if you're doing bigger projects. So like when Jason was asking about grey board, if you've got a bigger surface area to cover, use the opposite end. Right, so I'm going to do, so we've got one side stuck now. I'm just going to do the same to this. So I'm just going to stick one side at a time. and then I can hold it in place. So I'm just gonna fold the cut edge to the dashed fold line and hold it. Right, what, what we all saying? The writing's that small, I cannot read it. I know I was struggling, Karen. Even with my glasses on, I'm sat here thinking, oh my days. Marcia's found it on Amazon. Looks like same bottle. Yeah, it's usually, I think no matter where you get it, I think it is in that kind of shape bottle. Right, I'm just going to bend this back a little bit now, just so that I can get glue in here. Yes, Tombow. So when I use it, I use it sparingly as well. I'm hardly using any. I don't know how well you'll see this if it will focus, but I'm literally not using a lot. You don't need a lot of this stuff. And like I say, it does grab pretty quickly. You could put, you know, a peg or something on it to hold it. But, you know, while we sat chatting, I'm just holding it. And I've only got two more bits to glue and then it's nearly done. Patty's saying it's a great glue, but I dislike the stickiness on my fingers. I know you do have to be careful. That's why I don't use a lot of it. Okay, so let's just come back to this side now. So I've literally got these two flaps. So I'm going to try and do these two flaps at the same time. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of glue in there and on there. Because once you start holding it together, the, the glue does spread. So you don't need to go, you know, overboard with your glue and you don't need to go too near the edges. So I'm going to just put my hands inside and see if I can hold the last two flaps. I know you probably couldn't see that, but I was trying to do it so I could see it. Red liner tape is very good. Yeah, red liner tape's good. And what you can do with that, you can put your red liner tape on and peel a little bit back, can't you, and stick it and then pull the tape out. I do that with double-sided tape sometimes. The red liner tape is the one I always find that's got the static on it. You know, when we were talking about um, what we were talking about last week, when you peel off the plastic from wherever it was. Well, it might not have been us. I might have, that might have been a conversation I was having with somebody else. I can't remember. But I find the red liner tape is the, the when you peel it off, it's a bit staticky to get to get it into your bin. Yeah, you need something really strong for when you're making boxes. That's why I tend to use Tombow, the wet glue. I find it holds better. But red, red liner tape or a good, strong, double-sided tape. Right, so I think, looking at it now, let's just put that on one side. So that's the basic box. So let's measure it and see 
how big it is. So, across here, it's three and three and a half or three and five eighths, and depth, it's three and a half. So it's a decent sized box. So what you could probably do is, if you got those like mini cream eggs, the ones that are in the paper wrapper, and you bought like a big bag of them, you could get put some shreddy stuff in the bottom, which I've got somewhere, but I, I'm not going to go looking for it now. You could put a bit of shreddy in the bottom and then put some of those individually wrapped mini eggs in it. And then let's see what this does now. So this has got like a, a hook and a hole. So I'm guessing that must lock into there to keep that in place. And then the base has got two fold lines in it. So that's going to sit in there like so. And then you tie it up with a ribbon. So I suppose you could either leave it loose or you could stick the bottom. Let's see if we've got any ribbon we can tie it up with. I'm going to put the lid back on my glue so it doesn't dry up. One thing about Tombow, it's two way, so it stays sticky when dry, yeah, and then if you leave it, it goes permanent. It's like a sticky note, yeah. I've made notepads with Tombow. There is, um, again, there's a video on the channel. If you just get some white copy paper and cut it all up and stack it all up and put this across the top and leave it to dry, it's like Vicky said, you can then make your own notepads. I've done that. Rachel saying, mm, chocolate, no, I'm on a diet. This shape looks pretty generic, so could make the second part in canvas like a star or a... Yeah, I think so. Because you need, basically, you need two shapes, don't you, that you can flip in opposite directions. This bit in the middle is... Uh, two and one eighth wide by is it is it the same no one and a half so one and a half deep by two and an eighth wide so if you like you say if you got two shapes that were big enough to extend beyond this three and a half inches wide you could um use any generic shape so you're right Barbara Oh my goodness, you even put the glue on, the, the top on the glue. <laughs> Only so it doesn't dry up. Right, let's find some, don't know if I've got enough ribbon on here. Might have, yeah, let's see, let's do this. So we'll just, I won't glue it in, I'll just stand it in for now. Um, Lynn saying sounds like, zig glue then it's thicker than the zig glue but to be fair that's why i think it might work on our scan and cut mats as well but it does go permanent from what i've heard the longer it dries it goes more permanent so i don't really want to test it on my mats but i've definitely made notepads with it and I'm positive there's a video on my channel and that's likely to be in the Stampin' Up! playlist because from memory I used some Stampin' Up! paper to decorate the outside of the holder. So let's move everything out of the way. So that's how it looks from the top and that's how it looks. from side on. So I'm just going to trim the ribbon. So it's a decent size actually. The outside is four and one, two, three, four, four and three quarters. So it's four and three quarters at its widest point for anybody that's thinking about using a different shape like Barbara's saying you could use the box 
because that's got its own closure. If you can see, excuse me, can you see that? So you could use the box and make your own generic shape for the outside. And um, somebody was it did somebody mention earlier about decorating it with pumpkins and things. Rachel saying Ashley is too organised. I'm a messy crafter. <laughs> I think I think what it I, I get a bit stressed when it when I get a messy desk. But having said that, I do get a messy desk because I do craft, and we all craft, don't we? You know, and that's what crafting's all about. But on a Sunday night, I like to try and keep it tidy because, as I've said before, although I've got a decent space, I tend to end up working in like a six-inch space when I'm with you all. So I do like to keep stuff out of the way. So what do we think about that project? So that was just another simple project in Canvas Workspace that's free, that we've not had to buy. And again, I'm guessing that if, if you put the both parts of it on the mat, like I showed you before I sent it over to the Scan and Cut machine, and if you're doing it in the online, you're gonna have to group it first. You could resize it, you could make it smaller, it would maybe make nice table favours for Christmas if you made it a bit smaller. Or you could, I don't know about making it much bigger because this egg shape, you know, nearly filled the height of my 12 by 12 mat. But if, you know, you could certainly make it smaller and I think it would make nice little favour boxes. And I like the idea of using another shape, a generic shape on the outside. So Caroline's saying, I had to change to another device before my battery gives up. This is great. I've already bought Easter treats to send to my grand girls. Now I can make cute boxes to put them in. Well, Vicky, what I would suggest is maybe making one in, if you've got any old scrap card, because it's quite a big size. You might want to shrink it down a little bit. You know, and then you don't have to put as much sugar so to speak in it but I certainly think those little mini Cadbury's cream eggs you know the ones that are individually wrapped not the not the ones with the hard shell that have got solid chocolate inside because they're not wrapped are they you know if you're thinking about like Covid and all that at the moment not touching anything if you bought the Cadbury's mini eggs because even though they're in big bags they're individually wrapped you could put them in it I'm guessing you could probably get, you know, like the little mini Mars bars and bounty bars that you get in the, what do you call them? You know, those big bags you pick up in the supermarket and they've got all the little minis in them. They would fit in there. I'm sure they would. I might put some chocolate in this and give it Hannah because she still likes having a bit of something. Mm, JD Cougar is saying, nice project, we could draw on the outside to decorate it, like I showed in, a, in the last live, definitely, yeah. Very cute, you could even monogram it, yeah. But you could put all sorts on it, you could even cut in your scan and cut machine, if you're going to use it for Easter, there's Easter eggs, you could even cut some Easter eggs in different coloured card and decorate it with Easter eggs. If you look in the patterns in your scan and cut machine can turn the egg 45 degrees you could join a tab underneath if you really wanted to make it larger yeah definitely you could make it a tad larger by yeah diagonally across the map yeah definitely Rachel's saying, I start crafting on my foldable table. Then the cat lays all over it, so I end up on the floor. <laughs> oh, no. Vicky's saying, some of the treats are stickers and crafts, not all sugar. All oh, right, good idea, Vicky, yeah. 
Well, like I say, it's a decent size, isn't it? What did I say? It was about three and a half by three and a half and one and a half, one and a half deep, is it? I've forgotten already. Yeah, one and a half deep. So it's a decent size. Marcia's saying, I'm having a candy craving with all this talk of candy. <laughs> Sorry, Marcia. Let's think, what else could we put in it then? What's, what else could we put in a three and a half by three and a half by one and a half that's not food related? You could put names on the outside, Joyce is saying, yeah, good idea. You could cut designs in the egg shape to let the box colour show through, you could. I like the box alone without the outside oval, Linda's saying, yeah. You could, if you wanted just the box, you could cut some card and put like a handle across it. Or you could put like a handle that way and then a handle on that side from a, a thin piece of card, maybe about half an inch by six inches or something. I think, I think it's quite adaptable. I'll lay it down because you can see it better when it's laid down. Patty H is saying, yes, great idea, Vicky. My kids are not happy with all the candy I give the grandkids. I know they get far too much, don't they? That's something. I've, I've never bought Hannah Easter eggs. I always bought her. When she was little, I bought her clothing because everybody else buys them eggs, don't they? And they fill them full of sugar. And then as she got all older, I maybe bought a, you know, like a soft toy or clothing. But last year she wanted an Easter egg, so I bought her an Easter egg, Easter egg, and she's asked for Easter eggs this year. So I might, I might um, fill this with some of those little mini chocolate eggs. Don't tell her, everybody. And Jason's saying just had a Snickers. <laughs> Post-it notes, would they fit in it? Yeah, possibly. Let's 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 let me grab a, a, a thing. Let's try it. Post-it notes sounds like a good idea actually. So if we undo the little flap. So this is just a regular size post-it note. I mean it's not as thick because I've been using it but yeah that would go in there comfortably the little ones you could put some of these in easily don't think I know our dimensionals won't go in it let's see does glue dots go in it glue a box of glue dots just won't quite go in because of the angled edges but I'm guessing this is not a full roll but I'm guessing if you took the roll out of the box so for a crafter glue dots um, what else are we thinking so little notepads yeah post-it notes lots of great suggestions for decorating this project and filling it with Everyone seems to have their thinking caps on today. Yeah, it's great because you all give me ideas as well. Matchbox cars or Lego. Yeah, possibly. It's, like I say, it's a decent size. <laughs> Pass them around here, Jason. Yeah, the Snickers. Good idea, Terry. You could make a lot of them and make a East, an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. And they'd end up with a nice collection of cars, yeah. Yeah, anything really, I suppose. Like I say, so we know it's three and a half by three and a half by one and a half, okay? So that's up, up to you lot now to all get your, thing, your, your, your um, what you're gonna, you know, what find what you're gonna put in yours. Like we said, we could shrink it down and maybe make it as a Christmas tree decoration uh, favour for Christmas. Hopefully we're all going to have Christmas with our families this year. So that would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, table favours. 
maybe make a tree design. I think there's a tree design in your scan and cut machine. Make a tree design instead of the egg shape. Although I don't think it looks, you know, specifically egg shaped if you don't do it in egg themed paper. Um, Marcia's saying, clever idea about the post-it notes. Now I need to go chocolate shopping, <laughs> Alice was saying. Oh, bless you. Sorry, I have to go. Bye, everyone. You're welcome, Karen. Bye for now. I have some two-by-two two post-its. Yeah, is that what these are? These are... My ruler's coming in handy tonight, isn't it? Yeah, these are just just about two by two, yeah? So if you picked a few of these up and put a couple of different colours in the pack, and I'm wondering, you know those little small pens? I wonder if you'd get one of those in there as well. I don't know how big they are and I've not got one. You know one of those, you can get like little pens, can't you? You could maybe put a pen in and a couple of post-it notes. Or paper clips, a little box of paper clips might fit in it. Make like a little stationary holder. Do they still make Easter trees? Don't know. Marcia says, saw a cute idea the night before Easter plant jelly beans with the kids. Then after they are in bed, go out and put Tootsie Pops where the jelly beans were. That's a good idea. Similar shape to the Kirby shaped eye. Yeah, it's, that's mean. It's not, it doesn't scream Easter egg to me when I look at it. That's why when I looked at it earlier, as I say, I've not, I didn't look at assembly and I didn't cut it. I literally saw the design and thought we've not done a canvas project for a while. And I just called the first mat up and saw the shape and I thought, right, we'll do that. So Vicky's saying the girls like to carry the little boxes around and play with them after they get the treats out. My son actually asked me if I minded if they played with them and eventually tore them. The egg shape is all, also looks like a balloon, yeah? So could be a birthday party favour box. Yeah, definitely. So I think we've come to the conclusion it's a pretty generic box. It's a pretty decent size. And no doubt there's, you know, lots of things we could put in it. I'm just thinking, you know, those little mini things you get in the supermarkets and in like Superdrug and places like that, you know, like the little mini like Vaseline or little mini mouthwashes and things like that. I wonder if they would fit in it. I mean, you've got the shaped bottom, so it would be difficult to get something that's, you know, three and a half by three and a half in it because of this angular bottom. But this area here is all usable space. Charlotte's saying, I, Vicky, I always say I had my fun making it. They can have their fun their way. Yeah, because they do kids, don't they? I know when Hannah was little and I used to make stuff at Easter and send it in for all the kids. I did used to make them pretty simple because I know for a fact that they're just going to rip them open. All as they want is the chocolate or the candy inside. I agree, Vicky and Charlotte. Marcia's saying, wonder if a small box of Play-Doh would fit. Mmm, I have no idea. Nail polish, yeah, that's a good idea. The travel size area, that's it, Charlotte. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. The travel size area would be great to explore, yeah. Because they do all sorts, don't they? They do like little Vaselines, they do little shampoos, little hand washes. Um, I'm trying to think where my hand, little hand sanitizer is to see if that would fit in it. Let me just... See if it's in this drawer. 
Let's try this little hand sanitizer and see if this will fit in it. This might be too big, actually. Mm, not quite. It's just a little bit too big. But for anybody in like the US or Canada, Bath and Body Works, you know, the little hand sanitizers, the oval shaped ones, they would fit in here because this one only just doesn't quite fit. Let's see what else we're saying. We used to spray a twigs and oh yeah 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 make your own like egg tree yeah with you now. Hand sanitizer, Burt Burt Burt's Bee lip balm. Yeah, possibly they would fit in, wouldn't they? Yeah. Like I say, this, where, where's that sanitizer? This sanitizer is one I um, just got in my Tesco order. This is a Baylis and Hardy, Harding. It's um, 50 mil. I think that's kind of about two ounce equivalent. This is just marginally too tall. But if you can find something that's a bit smaller, but I know the Bath and Body Works would fit in here. I've got one in my car, but I can't be running out to my car to find it. Hand sanitizer wipes, someone's saying. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I've got anything else in my drawers. I do keep a stack of things. Hand cream, I don't know whether that would. No, I don't know what size these are. These are 25 grams, they're just a little bit too big. I don't know if a box of tissues would go in. No, they're too big. Oh, I've got a lip bar. I've got a Nivea one. That easily goes in. So little things, I think, you know, if you don't want to fill them with chocolate, little gifts is the way to go. So Maria Cook saying thanks again, Ashley, lovely project. Marcia, even if the box won't fit, you can always put it in a Ziploc bag. You could do a smaller offset of the egg shaping canvas. Yep, definitely, and make it as like a layer. You could. Like I say, Vicky, there's also egg shapes, I'm sure there is, in the machine, in the scan and cut machine, because I think I've used them in a project years ago. But yeah, you could. You could make matting layers. That would be nice. Yeah, stay safe, Maria. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. I always enjoy Sunday mornings with Ashley. Everyone have a great week. It is to be warm here this week. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it's meant to be warm here as well. Thank you so much for your time, Ashley, and amazing inspirational tonight. Oh, thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, and you, Alison, take care. Bless you. Barbara's saying, going to do one for my 10-year-old grandson and put cash in it. <laughs> That's a good idea. You could, you know what you could do, Barbie? You could put the cash in the bottom and put a little chocolate bar or something in the top. And when he opens it, he'll think it's chocolate. And then he might not realise there's cash there till he takes the chocolate out. So, what time is it? 20 past six nearly. Has anybody got any last minute questions or suggestions before I go? So that was tonight's project. I think it's good to have a look at these projects in Canvas Workspace. I don't think we use them enough, quite frankly. And of all the ones that I've tried so far, everybody seems to have liked the idea of them. And it's, you know, some of you have used them before, some of you haven't. And it just gives us all an idea, doesn't it? Like I say, when I looked at this on Canvas Workspace, to me, it looks small. It's a lot bigger in real life than I actually thought it would be. Definitely includes some candy to fool in. Definitely, Patty. Yeah, that's a... What a great project. I probably would have just passed it over, but now I will make it. Oh, thank you, Linda. That's the whole idea. I'm learning as well as you guys, because like I say, you know, you look at them and sometimes you think, 
would I use that or that looks tiny, I might not use it, but this is a decent size and I'm sure it's supposed to be 60 today. Yes, the egg in canvas is a good match. Thanks again for your time, Ashley. See you same time next week. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Take care. Great idea, Patty and Ashley. Consider it done. Good. I'm sure that will definitely fool him. Oh, you're welcome, Ellen. Right, I'll give it a couple more minutes and if I don't see any questions or comments pop up, I'll um, say good night, take care everybody, and I'll um, hopefully speak to you all next week. But I'll just wait for the last few minutes and just see if there are any last minute questions. Which new machine are you talking about, Anna? Great tutorial and fun ideas from everyone. Yeah, it definitely was, wasn't it, Terry? I like to borrow construction ideas from the collection of patterns. Yeah. You're welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Love our Sundays, Linda's saying. So do I. I don't always have a predetermined plan. And we just wing it, don't we, sometimes? But it's good fun. Vicky's saying thanks for reminding us about the Canvas Project Collection. Denise is saying thank you. Charlotte's saying thank you, Ashley. Wonderful to share ideas. Definitely is. I'm just waiting to see if Anna comes back and tells me what new machine she's talking about and then I can answer that one. Thank you, Sue, you're welcome. So I'll tidy up while I'm sat waiting. Put my glues away. Just another reminder to do a thumbs up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the thumbs up below the video. Thank you. <clears throat> Just scrolling back through the comments to see if I've missed anything, but I can't see anything. And Anna's not come back with her answer. JD Cougar saying did mine. Oh, thank you. Okay, I can't see any last minute questions or comments. So, um, oh, Anna, just seen it now. Not sure of the model name or number. Sorry, disregard the question. Okay, Anna, you can always message me go to my website and use the contact me box and email me if you need any information. Vicky's saying she's got some sewing to do. That'll be that I that'll be good. What are you making, Vicky? I was playing with an embroidery design before I came on. That's why I was a few minutes late. I'm just going to put the cover back on this mat, although it might need re-sticking. I'm going to turn my scan and cut machine off. While I'm waiting. Thank you for your patience. I did have a question or two, but they're completely gone now. Next time I will write them down. Oh, bless you, Jeanette. That's fine. Thea saying, thank you, Ashley. Another interesting project. Stay safe, everyone. Goodbye. Yeah, right. I'm going now then, guys. I can't see anything popping up. So stay safe, everybody. And I'll speak to you all next week. Take care. Oh, Vicky's saying, by the way, I found the page of GSM on your website. Brilliant. <laughs>
Okay, no worries, Vicky, thank you. Anna saying, yes, you are awesome at answering questions. Where in England are you? I'm in High Peak, Derbyshire, Anna. Where are you? I can see questions coming through now. Patty H is saying, is it the 85 series, Anna? I'm making angel dresses. They are for babies who don't survive. Oh, bless you, Vicky. Oh my word, what a lovely thing to be doing. How hard is it to do porch signs, the measurements, Yoland is asking. Um, how hard is it to do porch signs? I'm not sure, Yo Yolandi, the measurements. Well, I don't know what you mean. Um, if you mean in vinyl, I'm guessing you'd probably need a 12 by 24 mat. It depends how big you want to do them. I'm not sure what you mean by when you say the measurements. Jeanette's saying good night. Thank you, Vicky. Anna, you're in Texas. Okay, sorry, I forget. I'm rubbish. I see everybody popping in at the beginning and telling me where they're from. And then I literally just forget. So you're in Texas. Okay. So I'm in the UK. So I'm in High Peak, Derbyshire in the UK. So I'm in the countryside. It definitely is Charlotte, isn't it? Yeah, wonderful way to pay a tribute. What a lovely thing to be doing. Sad, but lovely. The angel dresses are made from donated wedding gowns. Oh, wow. That's a really lovely idea. I've not heard of that idea at all. How lovely is that? We have an organisation called Manitoba Angel Dresses. Wow, well, if anybody else is in Canada and they want to donate their dresses to Vicky or to the organisation, what a lovely thing to do. Okay, I'm going to go. It is 25 past six. And every time I say I'm going to go, a load of questions all, or comments all pop up. But um, it's because I know there is a time delay, but um, I can't see anything coming through now. So I think most people have gone. There's only 34. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, JD Cougar saying her daughter's donating her wedding gown. Wow. What a lovely thing to do. Right, I'm going. Oh, I've just seen your landing now. The big long welcome sign. If you only have a 12 by 12 mat, do I need to buy a 12 by 24? You don't need to buy a 12 by 24, your landy. You could do it on a 12 by 12. You just have to cut it in two separate, um, two separate mats. So whatever the... Um, you know, design is, if you could make the design so that you could cut it separately on two 12 by 12 mats, then that would probably work. Or if you're not sure about maybe being able to get it to all line up, then you could use a 12 by 24 mat because you've got a bigger, bigger surface area to cover. And Vicky's saying at JD Cougar, that's great. Okay, there are other groups in the US. The patterns are free from another group called Seven Pines. Okay. 
that's interesting. So I suppose if there's other people in the US that want to, to do that, then Vicky's giving you a place where you can go and get the pattern. Okay, it's... Okay, Yolanda, you're welcome. My daughter lives in Spokane. Okay. That's a lovely thing for your daughter to be doing as well, JD Cougar. Caroline, you're welcome. Right, I am going to go now. It's nearly 6.30, so... I'm going to end the live now. Take care, everybody. I'll